cradle are in fact it is such a pleasure to be here sincerely i'm beginning to get used to being here with you and i hope you too you're getting used to being with me and enjoying this program um, i would like to remind you that the brother's cradle is um, a platform for um, how do i put it now helping people reach their full potentials we celebrate the brother in the bible as a woman of God who stood and led the children of Israel out of darkness into liberty and all that. But one of the things that strikes me most about her life is the fact that she identified somebody. She called a man called Barak. She said, come here, you, this man. Are you not the one that God has called and anointed to go and deliver his people? And because she was able to speak to him, those hidden potentials, those things that were inside him that actually made him the captain and the leader that were lying dormant and he was afraid of using, were activated. And somehow, by God's grace, he was able to do what God called him to do. And that's what we are here for. We are here to tell you that you are the one God has chosen for the assignment he has for your life. And we're going to encourage you, we're going to pray with you, stand by you, teach you, nurture you, push you, do whatever we need to do to make sure you become that person God wants you to be. So please, if you're ready for that journey, make sure you're on the flight with us and invite others to come and learn also. Right now, if you can, please begin to share this program, begin to tell your friends that we're on and get them to come and be a part of what God is going to teach us today. I'm not here alone. I have two special, and you see my face has changed a little bit, <laughs> women. I love them so much. I really do. The only thing is that I was, I, I, I was feeling, anyway, let me introduce them. You know why. So right here by my side, <laughs> immediate right is, I call her Pastor Debbie, but she is Dr. Pastor Debbie now. So please, can you just say hello? Hello. Yes, so that's <laughs> Pastor Debbie, Dr. Debbie. Yeah. And then I also have further down by Debbie's side, I have Dr. <laughs> Amy. I know you, I think by now you should understand why I'm frowning because I don't know why I have two PhD doctors. Wow. Trying to oppress me on my own show. But anyway, <laughs> me, my own doctorate is coming. I'm already yeah. on it, so it shall come to pass. I'm encouraged by two of you. Thank you very much. Mm. So they are here. We're going to talk. And um, before they begin to speak, um, yesterday was the International Women's Day, and we the theme was break the bias. Strange enough, I had some people, especially men, call and 
behave as though there's no there's there's no bias to be broken. Behave as though there's there's nothing the women are complaining about. Mm. And I don't want to go into gender discussions, but the truth is that women are actually um, marginalized against. Women are discriminated against. And unfortunately, even in our current 21st century Nigeria in particular, we still have women facing a cake, cultural, traditional practices that are inhuman. In fact, that's the least word I want to use. And whether we accept it or not, there are some subtle messages that are going into the women's minds. It's as though they are being told that, look, this is the limit you can go. You mm. cannot go any further than this. Mm. You, you, people may not believe it. You, you, you tell the argument now is that, oh, girls go and study any course they want to study. They can become engineers. And now they even go to the rig. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. But when we start talking about promotion, we start talking about women going up to the highest cadres in the workplace, you begin to see that we meet glass ceilings. Mm. And the women who are chosen to go and head organizations, most times are chosen when that organization is about to crash. <laughs> so even if it crashes, yes, that's what they call yeah. the glass cliff. Mm. So today we are, we, are, we are not talking about this, but somehow it comes into play. We're going to be looking at the fact that you can. We believe you can do what God has called you to do. That's on the one part. Mm. And our wonderful sister here is going to address the area of self-doubt that, that used to be, sometimes still is, a major challenge in my life. You know, we're going to look at all that. And we're going to address how women in particular and all of God's children, men inclusive now, can rise above whatever imaginary or non-imaginary physical, spiritual, emotional, and whatever else kind of glass ceiling operates in our lives. So I want to start with Dr. Amy here first. Please tell us, you, you, one of your, your, the desires of your heart for today was that, oh, you wanted the women to know that they can. That's right. So tell us, what, what can they do? Okay. <laughs> Bless you, everyone. Thank you. And um, um, my name is Dr. Barista Amy, and I'm the face behind the Real Encounter Leadership Summit. Basically, what we do is um, encouraging people to become more, to become more productive. Um, so today won't be an exception. We just celebrated the International Women's Day yesterday. So, and um, the team, like Mama said, is, um, or was, breaking the bias. So we have gender inequality there. We have, uh, you know, stereotyping, which women are stereotyped. Women are told that you can go beyond a certain um, level. It's certain you can handle the affairs of this country. You can um, handle the affairs of management in a certain organization and all of those things. So there are limitations. Now, what do we do? It's in our hands, it's in your hands, it's in my hands to say, no, you can do this, okay? Like the popular cliche says, whatever a man can do, <laughs> a woman can do better, yes. Why do people say so? I believe people say so because a woman, they say, give a woman anything and she mm. multiplies it, yeah. so we're multipliers. So women, you give them something and they want to put in their best. They want to, um, you know, they want to exceed expectation. They want to go beyond the ordinary. They want to just excel and make it, you know, they do it passionately. If they're serving in the house of God, they serve passionately. Whatever they want to do, they are working, they work with all their heart, and they are sincere most times. Okay, so whatever you want to achieve, whatever you want to attain, that um, goal which you've set out for yourself, you can always do it. All it takes is planning, determination, you're being passionate about it. So those are the things. Yes, there are barriers, particularly here 
in Africa, okay, in our own domain, in our own clime, where we are being restricted. A lot of persons are restricted, women are restricted to say, oh, your place is just in the kitchen, kitchen. okay? In the other so room. when you're hustling too much or when you're doing so much, they are like, ah, you want to take my place, you want to take my stead, no, just limit yourself to this scattering for the children and taking care of the household, you know, and all of that. But no, you can become more. In whatever you're doing, you can become more. You can actually set your heart to it and tell yourself that. Give yourself a goal that by next year, I will do X, Y, Z. You can document it to make it easier for you. You can write it down, write your goals. And then there should be a threshold like, okay, for this quarter, I will do X, Y, Z. For the next one, I will do this. And I will just take them in small chunks. And then you see yourself achieving it. So... There are, we can do it. There is no limitation. Yes, cultural, we might have that societal bias or telling us that women can't head the country, this um, Nigeria, you know, but we can do it. We have women who are in different places in the um, upper chamber, Senate and House of Reps, and they are doing it, they are doing it, and they are doing it well. One, women are very sincere very very sincere they won't just take your money and run away <laughs> okay they don't do all the in our lingo yeah. okay mago mago mm. yeah short change people cheat people just because they want to make quick money okay so women are deliberate they are intentional about their steps they tell i'm not saying that everybody is um perfect or everybody is no yes but most at times women will tell you this is the price of this, and this is the price of this. Is if you're going for this, okay, yes, mm. this is the original version, and then this is another version, a copy version of it, and all of that. So they are all out there sincere. They are go getters. They are multipliers. They are passionate about what they do. They like to increase, you know, the tempo, increase the speed, you know, just do well generally, and not just being limited by the society to say no, you can't do certain. Okay, so now let's just take, I, I don't know, I, this, I'll take this in two ways, this question in two ways. Let's look at um, a, a girl, a young girl who is maybe 15, 16, about to go into university and she wants to study a course that her parents feel is a boy's course. Like I was in Abuja and I did a training for girls. And one of the complaints some of the girls made was that, oh, that they wanted to read the engineering and their parents said that it's a boys' course, so they had to force them to go and do nursing, for instance. Let's say there's somebody like that listening to us and you're saying, you can, you can, you can, you can achieve it, you can do it. What are the steps she will take? And the second part, just in case we don't have enough time, what of the people who have gotten to 50 and they are looking at the dreams they had, they have not yet achieved it. And today you're here saying that you can. That's you're saying that even if you're 50, it's not too late. Abby? Yes. Uh -huh. what, what practically, what steps does any, anybody who wants to achieve something, what are the things they need to do to help them get to their goals? Okay, so I'll start with the first one. The girl, child who wants to study a certain course and um, the parents are refusing for certain reasons. So you need to tell them what exactly, why you need, why there is the need for you to study that course. It might be out of passion, it might be because it's the in thing, the um, job in demand, or you know, you give them reasons, talk to them heart to heart, have a heart to heart course. With them communication with them you know even if it's a, a male dominated industry but there are still women today we have women who fly the yeah. aircraft yeah today we have I take pictures yeah. with them every time i meet them <laughs> yes exactly all the they female fly, yeah. pilots yeah. i meet yes. i take photographs with them mm -hmm. selfies so these days um things that people didn't used to allow women to do these days somehow yes it might take time but surely get there so you tell them tell your parents why and encourage them and then you also need to put in that determination so that they see that you're excelling in that area mm. okay so if business courses or management courses are not your thing or communication courses and you're excelling in engineering definitely they will let you 
be. You can even give them instances of people abroad or people in the diaspora who have done it and exceeded you know, expectation and are doing well in it. So you tell them what's in it for you and for the family as well. I'm sure they will come to terms with it. So if there's anybody who hasn't, who thinks that, oh, at my age, can I do this? Oh, at my age, I've gone beyond past my youth. So can I still achieve all those dreams, lofty dreams I used to have? Yes, you can do it. I say it categorically, you can. It depends on you. So if you set your heart to it, there's nothing that you set your heart you cannot achieve, except you don't want to. Except you don't want, the society should only limit you. So you can, yes, put in, tell yourself, ah, these days we see women who are, um, I think on the social media, I've seen people who are like grandfathers and they tell you they just completed their YEC or something. Yeah. And you're wondering, why will this be a news <laughs> boss? Why will it be make media rounds mm. and all the rest? You know, somebody who is achieving. But to them, it's their heart desire. It's yeah. something they've actually longed for. And so if you get it, there's no time there's no perfect timing or no time is too late for us to do certain things. Like some persons say, oh, I wish I, I gave my life to Christ when I was younger. Some persons will tell you, oh, now I'm even doing it. Now that I'm well informed, now that I know what it takes and all of that, I do it and give God my all. So it's good to do something and give it your best shot. They say put your best foot forward. So it's something that we can do. It takes you, it takes passion, it takes determination. It takes words of encouragement. It takes programs like this for you to listen, you know, for somebody to be an inspiration to you. I am not an A student, okay, but today in my 30s, I'm grateful to God that he has um, found me worthy to be a double um, doctorate um, degree holder. That is. Mm. All to his glory. I mean, it, it wasn't easy. Hallelujah. Okay, hallelujah. Catering hallelujah. Okay, for family, running, doing school attending classes business mm. and then also motivating and inspiring youth for them to become what the god has designed them to do it wasn't an easy bet at all it wasn't it was difficult challenges here and there and you know people telling you what are you even using the phd for and all the rest and but today i was able to surmount it i was able to break all the barriers and tell myself I can do it. This is a long-term goal. This is something that I've always yearned for right from childhood. And I thank God I was able to do it. So if I can do it, may me. So I think you can even do better. So go ahead and do it. Go and be the best you can be. God bless go you. ahead yeah. and do, do it. it. Go ahead and do it. Thank you. On this note, I'm going to bring Pastor Debbie in. Um, I, I said one of the things I, I had in my, I, one of my first books was Overcoming Self-Doubt. And I wrote that book because it is something I suffered, self-doubt. You know, I, I think it's one of the worst afflictions that anybody can ever bear mentally. Because why it's really bad is that it is self-induced. It's, it's not like somebody it? is sending it to you from outside so you can raise your barriers and your shields and know okay i will avoid this person because this person is always speaking negative and i will avoid this person because this one it is you how do you avoid your own self your own self will be telling you things about you that are not true demeaning you i'm trying to bring you down everybody else looks at you like a superstar but you know yourself that you are nothing because there are voices or a voice in your head that keeps and look i suffered from that for so so long and i thank god for bringing me out of it and one of the things i think the most important uh, or critical um, negative to or opposition to I can do yeah. it that she has said is self doubt mm. because if you do not believe you can then <laughs> everything else is mm. it, it, in fact the foundation cannot carry anything yeah. there's something my husband says he says if you do not believe that you can rise mm. even mm. a crane mm. cannot lift you mm. so no matter what that issue of self-doubt has to be addressed. So, Pastor Debbie, can you tell us 
what self-doubt is. Mm. Because some people may be experiencing it and not even know that this is a thing. So okay. what, what is self-doubt, right. first of all? Okay, I'm Pastor Debbie jones Irwe, Convener Women on Rescue, Co-Pastor Jabez as a prayer, and also the initiator of Godly Influence Initiative. The uh, G Influence Magazine. Yeah. <laughs> we just want to instill the God factor. That is the G factor. And like Mama said, I'm a PhD holder by the grace of God. Uh, we're going higher. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. My mama, like I write the color, you know, yeah, as in. <laughs> yeah. So uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we're always glad when we have opportunity to influence life. And that is what God has called us to do. We'll talk about um, the International Women's Day with the theme uh, Breaking Barriers and actually want to change climate. And I was just thinking about it, that actually bias can actually form part of uh, something that can bring self-doubt. Yeah, because if you really want to come out of your cocoon and there is a belief, a wrong belief system facing you, I mean, you just shrink back, you just withdraw back. Yeah, like what is self-doubt? Simply put, is doubting yourself. You can say it's the fear of uncertainty. I like to put the word uncertainty. You're not certain of what you've been scared of. Like you rightly said that even now you're still, you're still you know, scared. Me, I do things being afraid. That's yeah. the honest truth. There's nobody who is perfect there. That we're talking does not mean that there's no times we feel like inadequate. Mm -hmm. but, but we just like brush it aside, like you said, and we keep going on. It's a fear of uncertainty. Is the fear of... I'm not sure I'll be perfect about it. When you always think about perfection, and for your information, there's no perfect person. There's only purposeful people. Yeah. So when you begin to think of perfection, you want to get it right, you want to do it right, or maybe as we're seated here, some person is watching and say, ah, if, if not me before, eh, I for sit down like this, for sit down like this. Mm -hmm. And when you, keep <laughs> when, you keep, when you keep doing that, and it's time for you to do your say no, you know what? Since I can't get it right like this, let me not do it. Let me just wait. And so you begin to delay yourself. So well, and you no know, come to think of it, when you adapt yourself, you're adapting God. Mm. You are telling God that He made a mistake creating you. And you're telling him that ah, there's nothing important in you. So if you ask me for is a sin, so that's why when I remember that that is a sin, I just quickly come out of it. Um like I said, you can relate self-doubt to bias. Because most persons who have actually built this self-doubt over time is as a result of maybe cultural beliefs, discrimination. I've been to like communities, going to talk to people, and then you see the elders there, they just say, ah, she's a woman, please stand up. No, don't talk when men are, you know, when you have such things, you just go like, I don't have anything to say, man. Let me just keep quiet, really. They said, I don't have anything to say. You just like, said that. But when you have something to say, because people will shut you up, you just assume that you don't have anything to say. And then you just say that in yourself. So, Mama, that's the honest truth. And if we women can believe in ourselves, like she rightly said, this, this topic that intertwined, if we can actually believe in ourselves and tell ourselves that people are has actually broken out of such things, then we can follow suit. Now, if you look at, I don't know if I can quickly say this, courses, right? Yeah. yeah. If you look at uh, one of the courses of um, self doubt is uh, past. Uh, events, yeah. past events. I remember in those days, I, you know, I used to be very like playful. I have mouth, I can talk so much, look for trouble. So there was this girl, as I was going to beat you, this girl, like, seriously. Ha, I was waiting for her side. When she came out, guess what? I slipped. And the whole crowd there, I slipped. There was a stone. I felt that they started shouting, ah, she don't follow, she don't follow. <laughs> From that day, eh? If I tell you that I was so ashamed of going to school, thank God my father just dropped me. Otherwise, from that day, I just said, oh, it's like I can't beat anybody again. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was so scared. But thank God that, as we're in on the carillas, <laughs> as we did, I just broke out of that. I said, ah, ah. And that is the spirit. So past events, past events, in marriages, whatever, maybe you're faced with, like, we talk about discrimination, you're faced with, your husband will always tell you at home that there's nothing to write home about you. Surely you just believe that stuff. So past events can actually, and then upbringing, upbringing. I love parenting. I love parenting. I love to talk about parenting. For me, I, we have like three different styles of parenting. We have 
um, uh, laissez-faire, we have democr uh, democratic, mm -hmm. and then we have autocratic. If we're talking about self that we look at autocratic, when you have parents who are always, you know, it's just theirs, not yours. You're not coming to a place of compromise. Do it yes. my way. And then when you have such parents, guess what the children, you'll grow up with the mindset of, I, I don't think I should yes. talk. Mm -hmm. I mean, what my boss is saying is right. I mean, what my employer is saying is right. I mean, what my teacher is saying is right. So you just take everything and believe everything. So all bringing is another cause, uh, one of the causes of uh, self-doubt. Sorry, I don't want to cut you short. Yeah. But I, I'm hoping that as we are listening, because someone like me, there's a way I, I, I interact with information. Yeah. I, I take what is for me. Yeah. I take what I'm supposed to apply to other people yeah. and so on. So as you're listening now, I'm hoping that parents are also getting something. There's a way you can talk to your children that will be, you will be initiating that spirit of self-doubt. When you make your children feel they don't know anything, you, they want to talk, shut up, I'm the one who this, 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 and that, 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 that. You, you're, you're already creating that uncertainty mm. in them. Mm. That is one area. She talked about spouses, wife, husbands, yeah. even wives. Some of you, yeah. too, you also talk to your husbands anyhow. You finish talking to him. You know the Bible talked about the virtuous woman. Yeah. And the Bible says that the law of kindness is in her mouth. And the Bible goes on to say that her husband sits at the gate. The wife, the, one of the reasons why the man is so confident mm. is that he has a woman in the house yeah. who is telling him that, look, you're the best man in this town. Mm. You know? So everybody can contribute to killing that spirit yes. of self -doubt. Yes, yes. So take the part of what you can do for others. Yeah. And then also think about yourself. Is there anything that tells you you are not good enough? Mm. What is that thing? You also need to sit down and analyze where it's coming from. Because when you know where it's coming from, it you makes can. it easier yeah. for you to deal with yeah. it. Yeah. Sorry for cutting in, but yeah. I'm really passionate about this particular subject yeah. matter. For me, as a growing believer, I, I had this issue of backsliding so regularly as a young girl. So I got born again in my teenage years, but I just found out that I kept backsliding, you know, backsliding. Oh, it is either one boyfriend or one thing or the other. And you know, when you backslide like that, at a point, you will not even be sure when you come back whether you're really... <laughs> Standing. Yeah, yeah. And then even if you're standing, the next thing is, are you sure that God will even trust you to mm. continue standing? Mm. Mm. Yes, you have come, but you are you normally backslide. Mm. How are we sure you're not going to not, that's the, the thought is telling you. How are you sure God is mm. not saying I bet if Manuela, no, 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 I don't <laughs> think that's one I can use her, she will backslide again. <laughs> you know, those kind of things. So I kept I will I will have Maybe I will feel like God wants me to do something. But at the same time, that voice will be telling me God has counted you out. Hmm. He cannot trust you. Because, you know, sometimes pastors will come and be preaching. Yeah. Can the Lord trust <laughs> you? Can he <laughs> depend on you? And yeah. I, I will look at myself. I understand. I'm backsliding again and again. Ah, how can the Lord? So even though, yes, I got to that place of firm spiritual growth yeah. in my early 20s just before i got married but those things kept haunting me mm. you know kept haunting me and sometimes <laughs> <laughs> if i can just add something to what mama is saying you know comparison can also bring self-doubt mm. me i tell people and i tell myself i'm not in competition with anybody at all yeah i am what i am and i use affirmative words like i'm getting better do you understand? Mm -hmm. So but when you start comparing yourself with Pastor Debbie, oh, Pastor Debbie, I know, don't follow Mama that is saying, ah, they have gotten PhD, they have did this. Mama is very confident of herself. In fact, she has a lot. If you, yeah. if you go through her curriculum, it will shock you. So I'm just telling you that. So that's like, oh, God of Nazareth. You look at that, Pastor Debbie, look at Amy now. Ah, she, she, they are all PhD holders. Oh, my goodness. I'm not sure I can see. Some of you have know something more than us. Yeah, exactly. That's the honest truth. So me, I don't compare my Myself, I can't even compare myself. It's okay. Celebrate that woman that is making it. How is it of you to celebrate the woman? Oh, and why should not? Now she will go celebrate. All of us not be women. Amen. All of us are women. And if you have that mindset, 
you can go forward. So I just tell myself, you know what? If I can celebrate that person, I can get to that, to that position. So if we can keep comparison. Like now, Mama was talking about you know, sliding. And, so I believe she was comparing herself as at that time with another spiritual. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, and now you brought it. Now you brought it to me. <laughs> so truly, even when my husband wanted to marry me, I also felt I was not qualified. <laughs> I felt there should be better sisters. To for God to give that, even though I had known long ago that yeah. this is what God wanted for me, but I felt there were other, and unfortunately, I even had people actually tell me that I was not good enough. Yours truly, it was sad. But this year is 25 years wow. by the grace of God. God <laughs> has kept me. Yeah, I don't know whether I who don't can know. be more spiritual than you. That's what, my, that's what my husband used to yeah. say. Yeah. And spirituality is not, nobody can measure it. And for nobody you. can measure nobody it. Nobody can measure that's it. That's the honest It's truth. how much you love God, how much you are willing to grow and walk with Him. Mm. That's what spirituality yeah. is. It's not about how you vibrate how you? and all those things. <laughs> oh, no, no, let me say something. Are you, just... you know, Debbie is my close friend. Dr. Amy, you, I love you. I will quarrel with you later. <laughs> She's, she's also a go-getter. But yeah. I, I'll use Pastor Debbie, Dr. Debbie. Pastor Debbie. Anyone, Pastor Debbie. I will use her because I've known Debbie for years. Yes. More than 15 years. Yeah. It's not today. Going to 20, so yeah. let me, almost, like, Going almost to 20. 20 yeah. uh -huh. So one thing I've, I've always admired Debbie. If you give Debbie a microphone now. <laughs> hey! Ah. The whole place will stop. <laughs> And then me, give me a microphone. This is, as I'm talking now, this is how I'll be talking. Yeah. And there was a time I used to feel that, oh, my own style was not good enough. If I'm not firing like somebody like her. And then I'll finish saying that. And then she she will come and meet me. Maybe I'll finish teaching. She'll ah, say, oh my God. Jesus. If you know how your word is. I'm telling you. Thank God. I want to commend you here for because it, it's, it's not easy for someone to admire you, and then you come back and be admiring the person <laughs> that admires you. So thank you for not just taking the compliment and going with the compliment mm. away, but also giving back. That's one thing we also need to learn. Yeah, how to women. give each other compliments. Yeah. See, we're not competing. Ah. How to give each other? Like now, see, Dr. Amy. Yeah. Now, she has started. In fact, when she started her. When she inaugurated her um, the real TRM, yeah. I, I think I was there. Yes. He invited me. Why I came. Why should you invite me? Though? <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. It, like three years, two or three years ago, ah. or four. Oh, wow. Okay, it's quite long. Time is flying. Oh. Wow. So I got there, and her vision was beautiful mentoring, training young people, and leadership, and all that. You know, I looked at it. That's something I too am into, but not exactly yeah. her way. But what I loved was how she packaged her program and everything. Hmm. I said, see people going somewhere. Wow. But I, I, I didn't come back and say, ah, you, what are you doing with yourself? <laughs> and you to God gave you vision. You have not done anything. And hmm. I killed myself. No. no. So all of us need to, sincerely, we are laughing about mm. it we are joking about this it. is very serious but it's a very serious issue yeah. because there are many people who have lost out in life mm. lost out in their calling lost out in business marriage people that they share partnered with they comp they saw them as competition and yes. enemies cut them off yeah people who could they could have learned from you know as i go about even in people's houses i learn yeah during COVID, I was in my friend's place. Sorry, it's a women's program. We can talk about anything. <laughs> yeah. I was in my friend's place. And because we were stuck there, we couldn't come. I had to live with her for three weeks. And one thing I noticed was that her tomato, she buys her basket of tomato. And she doesn't blend. Me, I used to blend and pack in smaller mm. packs. She doesn't. She buys her tomato and freezes it. Yeah. And, and then when it. she wants to use it, she cooks it mm. and then blends. Yeah. I got back, I said, do you know my tomato, my stew? Oh. I started tasting and wow. We got tomato from Italy. Hmm. Sweet! I could have gone there and been hmm. looking for every way I'm I am better. You. I'm telling you. And not learn anything. Hmm. So 
please, we are addressing all. We are telling you you can. Mm -hmm. We are not telling you that you should go and compete. Yeah. That's yeah. not the vision. Learn from your sisters. Learn from your friends. Increase capacity and overcome self-doubt. Yeah. So just before you continue, do yeah. you want to add something? Well, self-doubt is a major, it's, it's a dream killer, actually. Yeah. I'll tag it that way. It is a major one because if something within you is telling you you can't, then it's you need to bring it ah. as soon as and speak to people who you think can inspire you, people who you think you can onboard in, mm. so that you get a hold of who God wants you to be. Mm. There are so many persons who still have not discovered that their potential and have not even discovered mm. what God wants them to do. So they are just living, basically just existing. Like yeah. Okay, so what you need to do, you need to be productive in your life, mm -hmm. in different spheres, you need to go out there and do more, become mm. more. So self-doubt is a serious thing. Yes, we've talked about it. You might think, oh, self-doubt, I can't. Mm. Do you know just public speaking alone takes a lot? Yeah. Yes, it takes a lot because you might think, oh, I can share that testimony mm. better. Or by the time they <laughs> hand in the microphone, it has and disappeared. It from. <laughs> I used to be like that. Yeah. Okay, I thought that people, I couldn't stand before um, people and all of that. But when I became intentional, I started doing it and then taking time. Mm. I had to develop myself mm. first. So you develop yourself because you there's something God wants you to share mm. to some other person who will benefit. So what is that message? Mm. Look at that message. Don't look at somebody's style. Oh, yeah. the person talks like this mm. or the person acts like this mm. or the person... Like uh, Pastor Christy Battery, I hey. know she is. She's something hey. else. Like yeah. Yeah. Mama. So don't really copy, you know, someone else's style. What is your style? Whatever mm. that suits you, please go ahead and yeah. do it. But you need to break that barrier. You need to overcome it. You need to be what God wants you to be. You know, and that is why they said that. Um, you, com you should compete with yourself, mm -hmm. not yes. with others. So and that's why I love Sigmund Freud. There's mm -hmm. this father of psychology, Sigmund Freud. Talk about the innate, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that everything about human being from the inside, that if you are not able to tackle it, you'll be fixated. And once you are fixated, that's the problem. Although when we do research, you must go through all the theories. Mm -hmm. But I love his own, mm -hmm. but it has to do with person, it has to do with you as a person. And if you're able to overcome yourself, mm -hmm. You will get there. Mama, just before... Okay. Sorry, I just wanted to add. Mm. You know, when I was writing that, my overcoming self, that one mm. of the persons I used in the Bible was Moses. Okay. See, Moses. Moses was brought up as a prince. Ah. I mean, if there's anybody who should be confident to go on an assignment when, that God had given, it should have been him. But on the day God got to him, because he had been at the backside of the mountain for, I also have a book titled that way, for 40 years, he had lost sight of his vision. Of course, he had said, wondering, was I really this special person that they said I should be? Now, fast forward, we get to the burning bush, and God begins to talk to him and call him and tell him, this is the assignment mm -hmm. I have for you. Mm -hmm. You know the Bible tells us, if you go, you can read Exodus chapter 3. He, he said to God, Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should go and bring out the children of Israel? And then Moses also said again to God, if I get to the children of Israel, what will I say to them that will convince them? God gave him another answer. Moses again started another one. But you know that my mouth, I stammer. Mm. God got angry. God said, am I not the one that gave the mouth... I, I called you. I, for me to call you means mm. that I believe you have what it takes mm. to go and do the assignment I'm giving to you. So please, one of the things I believe so much is everybody has a purpose. Everybody. There's nobody on earth that God did not give an assignment. Some people may call it small assignments. Some may call it big assignments. Mm. It doesn't matter. But that your so-called small assignment if it is not done, big assignments will not be achieved. Yeah. So everybody is equal as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. All of us have a purpose. 
And if there's a purpose for your life, then that means God has already pre-equipped you with what you need to fulfill that purpose. And self-doubt tries to take your eyes off what God has given you. Tries to show you what you're lacking. Tries to show you all the mistakes you've made in your past and tell you that you cannot do it. For your information, the devil is that spirit behind self-doubt trying to take you out of your blessing. She said it's a dream killer. Mm. Pastor Debbie said sin. Sin. Sin is from the devil. Mm. Self-doubt from the devil. Okay, so just also add, fear of failure is another cause of um, self-doubt. When, like I said, you want to be perfect. I mean, failure is a sign that you're trying. So if you try, you don't succeed. Try, try, try again. Thank God for that, that uh, word. If you try, you don't succeed. Try, try, try again. And you know, I, I wrote down three consequences of um, self-doubt. One, you're stuck in that trap there's, there's you're stuck in that trap of comparison you understand there's no way to go there's no way you know you're not going forward another one is that you shrink back when there are opportunities for you just tell yourself that i'm not sure i can do it mm. and people just believe what you believe about yeah, yourself yeah. so you shrink back never use doubt yourself because you can't get the best out of you yeah and I say when self-doubt and negative thought becomes a habit, it can prevent you from opportunities. So don't make it a habit. From today, begin to think of how you change that misconception so about there's yourself. This, there's this quote that once I, once I heard this quote, I have never let go of it. I can't remember the woman who said it, but I've adapted it to almost all my talks. She said, your world will expand or shrink Mm -hmm. in proportion to your courage. Mm. And I tell people, if I, if I want to use spirituality, I'll use it. If it's love, yeah. whatever, your world mm. will either expand mm -hmm. more wide, like what she has just said. Mm -hmm. If you have courage, you are able, you are able to overcome self-doubt, you will take opportunities as they arrive. Mm. Once they come, you will grab them, especially if you know they're in line with God's word yeah. and will for you. Mm. But, if you do not have courage, and that means you're, you are really, really high on self-doubt, mm. your world will shrink. Mm. It will keep getting smaller and smaller. Mm. People will stop. Look, one of the things I noticed, even me as the co-pastor of Gateway International Church, there was a time people come to ask me questions, and I answer, my answer is I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know I was undoing myself, because at a point, who will come and ask me a question if they already know that my you answer is going to be I don't know. There's no need to consult her. They'll go somewhere else. So I had to start telling myself, you cannot be using the escapist way of getting out of decision. Not making a decision is a decision in itself. Yeah. So face the bull by the horn. You can. By the way, are there any phone calls coming and any questions? Please let us know in case there is anything. So, please, please. We are telling you you can. We are here to encourage you. And we are telling you that one of the demons you have to fight is self-doubt. If we must close the gap. If we must close the gap. Thank you. If we must close the gap. So, okay, so let me just conclude by saying that. If you want to get out of self-doubt, number one, you have to be aware. Like Mama said, that she was aware that when they come to her, she keeps saying that I, I don't know, I don't know. So you have to be aware and you need to change. Be aware that there is a problem. Stop telling yourself that it is where. That's one language that we always use in Christianity that deceives ourselves. It is where, no problem, no doubt. But tell yourself the truth that you see, it's a problem. Forgot one of our meetings. The lady just asked, and that was why I was okay. Let me just start dealing with this. The mama said, uh, Meet Pastor Debbie, let her talk to you about the self doubt. You know, she knew that she has a problem. Then most people will not know that they have problems. And then, even if you're aware, then search the word of God. We are Christians. God told me that I should not be talking about motivational. He said, There is not power in motivation if there's the word of God is not there. So please go to the word of God. God has not given you the spirit of fear. 
or the spirit of sound mind, spirit of power, the spirit. There are words in the Bible that can blow your mind. Like what we say, go stand your dada, and you just stand up immediately, and then you start doing what God wants you to do. So get to the word of God, hold the word of God, and keep using words of affirmation. I have them all, like I said, well, I'm not in competition with anybody. I'm possible. And thank God for impact. Thank God for Pastor George. I will always give us words like, ah, I can't die small. I can't die small. When things are failing, I say, try me. I'm not going to die small, Lou. Go blow fire. You know what you tell me that, Mama, the thing is failing. I say, can't fail, Lou. You understand? Go blow fire. I need let life come upon it. I can't die small. Have words like this. Write them on the wall. Wake up every morning and use those words. Keep telling yourself, like she said, I can. Tell yourself, I will make it. Oh, I'm not, I'm not good, but I'm better. Mm -hmm. I'm not where I used to be. I know I'm not there yet, but certainly I'm not where I used to be. So you keep telling yourself, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm on a journey. I will get there. When you use these words, you will see yourself rising, like Mama said. So I if somebody, somebody's um, aspirations
it in your hand and it is not for you mm. he will also tell you it is not yeah. for you and tell you the role you have to play in that dream like it happened for joseph and uh, Pharaoh. Fine. The, the, that dream was Pharaoh's dream god mm. told joseph how to interpret it and yeah. showed him how to fit into it yeah. you know but where i'm going to is it's time you start taking notice of the positives the, the good vibes, the intuition, the little whispers that the Spirit of God whispers in your ears. The, the times you read the Bible and the verse jumps up at yeah. you. It's time to begin to take notice of those things because they are the so-called small things that make the solid foundation of the great future you are going mm. to achieve. Mm. All these people who have achieved greatness, if you ask them, there was something. Yeah. There was something small. There is either a dream or a word or some encounter that they had yeah. that made them know that, look, this is for me. This is the path I'm supposed to take. Mm. And if you don't begin to pay attention, you will not get there. Yeah. And then we will finish all these discussions. You'll end up on your deathbed and you'll look back and say, wow, this is what I should have done. Mm. But I didn't believe that it could be me. I didn't believe I had what it takes. I didn't believe this, and you lose out on everything. God forbid that that will happen. I know our time is mm. almost up, almost up. But just before we go, one other area I would like to talk about is the political area. I have, I am beginning to get so frustrated with how things are going. You cannot say politics is not your business. Yeah. It is your business. Whoever rules your city, your state, your country determines to a large extent what will happen in your life. That's it. Last week we had a um, um, Pastor Mrs. Ella Uncle here. And she made a comment when she was talking about how a policy of the government can scatter. We're talking about financials, okay. woman and, her, and finances. Okay. And we're talking about financial empowerment. And she was talking about why it's important to have more than one stream of income. And she said that a policy can just scatter, and, which is true. Yeah. And she now gave an example, like now, how bike riders are no longer in business. Me, I had a small career business, one of my small streams of income. It hasn't worked. The little money I was getting from there closed. Why? Because 
the people, the government needs a policy. No, if we have women, Christian women in government who pray, who have access to leadership, who are up there on the table, there are decisions that would want to take place. And the person can speak either yeah. by the Spirit of God yeah. or by her own understanding. Now, look, this decision you want to take, this is how it's going to impact on the society. This is what is going to cause, and so on and so forth. But we sit down and behave as if it is not our business. It doesn't matter to us. Meanwhile, it matters. It matters. And nobody says that you cannot, you, your voice cannot be heard. Nobody. You can. Women are too few. In fact, I don't want to, I don't want to go into reading the, 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 the number of, of decisions by the National Assembly that just go to show that as far as they are concerned, women are non-entities mm. in this country. Mm. It is so painful. And you come to vote when you don't have up to 20% of the women mm. in the Senate or in the uh, Federal House of Reps. I mean, how would they vote in fairness? How? And we sit down and we... What... Look, the two dimensions, before I get too emotional about this thing, come out, begin to participate yeah. in politics. Yeah. One. Two, if you feel that you cannot, for whatever reason, you are a Christian woman, you are a woman of influence, mm. at least the people around you, even if you can't do it yourself, the men around you, your sons, your husbands, educate them. Mm. Let them understand where many of these their decisions pinch. Because they are not aware. I was talking with somebody yesterday, and the person was like, no, uh, women are not ready. I said, what do you mean by women mm. are not ready? Women are ah. ready. We have been ready. We are more than ready. We have been doing things, uh -uh. sacrifices, walking. There are times, I'm a Calabari woman. Mm -hmm. I know how women will go. Husbands will sit down and be drinking. their are kai kai ijo. People, no, I don't want to use, if I, sorry, forgive me, mm -hmm. but let me first of all say I'm Calabari, so you understand, I'm an Izon woman, so you will not think I'm just criticizing a tribe, but I'll start from home. We, we have them. The men feel their lords and kings, and the women slave. They do so much, but those things they do, do, uh, do not get to be reckoned with in the society. Nobody can say women are not ready. We are. Mm. We are. And it is time for us to show our readiness. Yeah. I love what she said about us developing ourselves. Begin to read. Mm. Begin to discuss. Begin to pray. Mm. Begin to ask God, me to do I have a place mm. in governance? And what is that place? And what can I do? Because Christian women, if we do not arise like Deborah, we will see our country go into hell. We are sitting down here smiling, laughing, thinking that everything is okay, but it is not. The brother said, look, the place, city life, village life ceased. Mm. That means the way they used to do business ended. Mm. Tales by moonlight ended. Mm. Security gone. Mm. Everything that made for communal living had disappeared. They were living in bondage. She said, until I, the brother, arose. It is time for us to arise. Mm. You must arise. Yeah. And we are here to say, you can. You can. You can. So in your smallest unit, in your world, in your community, in any place, your little clubs, get up and begin to make sure your voice counts. And that voice is not just by talking. It's by the things you do. It is by your charity by your advice, by leadership, by taking up responsibilities, pulling through in the tasks that they give to you, showing that you're able, that is how your voice begins to count. Mm. Oh my God, please, you can. Mm. You can. I know we need to round up now. Yeah. <sighs> Final okay. words. Yeah. Please, as we begin to okay, go. I just want you to know that when God said that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent, he meant every bit of it. We are equipped. 
for this challenge. And if God has given us the sole privilege of nurturing, of overcoming, we women have the power. Any woman who can manage home can manage a country. Any woman who can manage husband, manage children, home money, go to markets, write, you know, budget and market stuff, can rule the country, can bring change. We can, without much ado, save that to get out and we should hit the road and dot the I's, cross the T's, and our seed must bruise the head of the serpent. Amen. No more discrimination Amen. while getting there. Amen. Thank you very much. Oh, people of God, I'm just so happy. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Um, I'm really, really elated to be speaking with you today. Um, I just want to tell you, go and do more. Mm -hmm. Go and you know, achieve that which God wants you to achieve and that which he has deposited already in you. It is well with you told you that he would be by your side. I mean, when you look at the accounts of Jesus Christ, our Savior, um, when he was in the world, he was mainly around women. Okay, women were centered around him, and he loves them. Women are strong. We are bold. We are go-getters. So, you can do, you can be that woman of influence. You can be that woman of impact. You can do, you can be that woman of God, who God has ordained to also help in salvaging a situation or bringing people out from bondage. Mm. So go and become more. Do it. God will bless you so much. Mm. Thank you so much. And I know that um, it is well. It is doable. Mm. Dear woman, you can do it. Mm. If I can do it, you mm. can do it. Mm. Thank you. Amen. Mm. Amen. Thank you so much. That's, oh, sorry. Dr. Debbie. Yeah. Dr. Amy. Yeah. Dr. Debbie. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being Thank here you. with Thank us. Thank you, Mama. And, and all of you listening. So whenever you hear the voice, tell me. Tune your antennas. Set the signal of the spirit. Go into the world. You will hear God's voice telling you you can. And you'll get up and do it. The Lord bless you. The Lord strengthen you.
Quick, can we join our hands together? Let's just pray for everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, we commit our listeners to your hands. Thank you for bringing them to encounter this their brother's trade will are. And Lord, I know there was a plan, a purpose, an intention. And Lord, that thing we decree, O oh Lord, that it is realized in every heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, Lord, we pray in agreement yes, that Lord. anybody who has been grabbed arrested, limited by ah, the spirit of self-doubt. Everyone that has listened to, heard, and been manipulated by, I can't do it. Father, Lord, every such mentality crumble in the name of Jesus. Today, Lord, I cover your children with the blood of Jesus. I ask that you forgive them for doubting you and doubting themselves. I ask that, Lord, from now they'll be energized in their spirit, soul, and body. Yes, they will Lord. rise up with confidence. Yes, they will go forward with courage. Yes, and they will achieve all that you have for them yes, in the Lord. name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Today, Lord, I declare, O oh God, that by your mercy, they will possess Amen. their possessions. Amen. They will go up to their high places. Yes, Lord. Lord, by your hand, they will yes. fulfill purpose. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for our sisters, Amen. women, Amen. that you have chosen chosen to be vessels in your hands, those who are shrinking back, those who are limited, afraid, worried, and you know, under the yoke of guilt and condemnation and whatever else that's held them back. Father, Lord, today we decree their freedom in the name of Jesus. We command you, woman, Arise, uh, let the spirit of the brother come upon you. Arise yes, and let light shine from you. Amen. Arise Amen. and become all that God wants you to Amen. be in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are able. Amen. Yes, you can. Yes. From today, may the anointing of God yes. rest upon you. Amen. Go forth. Amen. Shine as light. Amen. Become all that you are made to be. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And just in Amen. case any of you has not received Jesus as your Lord, Amen. you can also take this prayer with me right Amen. now. Father, thank you for sending your son to die for me. Thank you for giving me a second chance to life. Today, I repent of my sin and I come to the cross to receive salvation. Receive me as your son. Receive me as your daughter. Take me as your child again in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Father, for as many who have made this prayer, I ask mm -hmm. that that supernatural thing you do, where mm -hmm. you, you translate your children from the kingdom of darkness mm -hmm. to the kingdom of light, let it happen instantaneously. Mm. I ask that you release grace upon them yes, to Lord. reach their full potentials mm. in Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer, please look for a Bible-believing church and make sure you begin to fill your spirit with God's word and you will become who God wants you to be. Thank you for being with us for this one. Ah, we are going to be back with you next week and I'm trusting God that he has something beautiful for you. God bless you. God calls his face to shine upon you. Amen. And the Lord lift you to your next levels. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. And Thank amen. you.